A dipole antenna properly deployed is almost 100% efficient. A vertical antenna with 120 radials is almost 100% efficient. How are those antennas compromises? Instead of saying all antennas are a compromise, we should say that most antennas have been compromised by the ham radio operator and often out of necessity. We can't get the antenna as high as it should be, for example. Maybe you can't even get the antenna outside. You're forced to use an indoor antenna. But many other compromises are self-inflicted, either due to lack of knowledge or falling for marketing hype. As we've detailed in a previous video, the idea of an 80 through 10 meter efficient in-fed half wave is a marketing myth. No transformer can be efficient from 80 through 10 meters. And vendors put a capacitor, this one right here, the little blue thing, they put that capacitor across the primary of the transformer to hide that fact. That capacitor drops the SWR on higher frequencies, hiding the fact that the transformer is heating up and becoming less efficient. Now, is that the antenna's fault? No, it's just following the laws of physics. Someone came up with the clever idea of putting that capacitor across the transformer primary to hide what's really going on. It's like a used car salesman selling a car that's been in a flood without disclosing that. This video will focus on single wire antennas for the HF bands, like the end fed half wave. That can be an efficient single band or two band antenna like 40 and 20 meters. But there's an idea that where the transformers mounted doesn't matter. Let's go to my RF engineer collaborator, ON6URE, operator of the RF Guru company in Belgium. This is his website. Because an in-fed half wave uses a voltage transformer at a very high impedance point, the feed end is extremely sensitive to ground proximity. Ground losses couple far more strongly into a high voltage, low current node than into a low voltage, high current point. Raising only the transformer box doesn't do much for pattern. Raising the middle of the wire where current is highest sets your takeoff angle. But the feed end height still matters for efficiency. On an end fed half wave, because it controls how hard that high voltage node sees the ground. So that's an advantage an in-fed off-center fed or off-center fed antenna has over the in-fed half wave. Those two antennas use a four to one transformer, not a 49 to one, and are attached to the antenna at a lower voltage feed point. That means those antennas are less affected by ground loss compared to an in-fed half wave at the same height. I had a comment from a ham recently with an in-fed half wave, all band. He likes it because the transformer can be mounted where the coax comes into the shack. That is a compromised antenna, not the antenna's fault, but the ham's fault, but that might be out of necessity. Maybe he can't mount the transformer anywhere else. Isn't it good that we know these things or we can learn these things? I think so, but some hams don't. They think such facts discourage new hams. Now, if I was using an all band in fed half wave and learned it wasn't the best antenna for that, I would gladly take it down 
put up an off-center fed type and be really excited to try it out. That's what ham radio used to be like and still should be. Now, there's a lot more information on this topic on the RF Guru website. Link posted in the description. Every antenna is a compromise. False. Different antennas deliver different intended patterns. The real compromises are self-inflicted losses. Consider subscribing to this channel. Ring the bell for updates. And 73.